Now that we have discussed the theoretical aspects of a one wave maneuver model, we are now looking into the uh, practical example with real life data. We have at hand uh, the US data of hospitals, it is hospital data. These hospitals have been grouped according to two factors, one is ownership and the other is the certification level. Both the factors having three levels each and uh, then what we do is we are testing the effectiveness of ownership that is one of the factors at the moment because we are considering one way MANOVA model. So, we are testing the effectiveness of ownership of uh, factor of the hospitals on the different cost aspects cost to the hospitals. So, since this is a multidimensional case we uh, we have we are taking more than one cost, but then again to restrict uh, the data dimension we are considering about four costs to the hospitals. So, that we are keeping the data dimensionality to four. Okay, so, what we had uh, already said in the last uh, session that we have uh, in a certain US state hospitals are classified on the basis of ownership and certification. There may be more factors as I have mentioned, but let us say that at the moment we have data uh, classified in these two groups out of which only one we can test at the moment because we have the knowledge of one way MANOVA. And the study is basically conducted to investigate the effect of ownership on costs to the hospitals. So, I said I would introduce the cost factors. So, we have the first one. So, this is these are the different costs. First one is so basically four costs were four types of costs were monitored. Okay, and data were collected on them. The first one is the cost of nursing labor. The second one is the dietary costs. how much each hospital is spending on these aspects. Then we have X 3, the third one the plant operation and maintenance costs, plant essentially the hospital, plant operation and maintenance costs. And finally, we have the cost of housekeeping and laundry. So, we would like to see whether the ownership factor and these costs the whether what is the level of effect of these costs on the ownership factor. The ownership factors being private non-profit organizations and government. So, from this all I know is that I have p equal to 4 that is the data dimensionality. So, about the data what can I say that I have p equal to 4 four cost variables of a total of n that is 5 16 observations. So, this value gives me the total number of hospitals that have been covered. We still do not know how many are there in each level of the factor. So, now we have these were separated, these observations were separated according to ownership again to stress upon which factor we are considering at the moment and in k or 3 groups obviously, because because it is ownership we have 3 groups k equal to 3 groups and some more information are given to me. I have given that N 1 that is under the first type of ownership I have 271 observations under the second one I have 138 and the third one I have 107 observations giving me N equal to 516. 
So, I have this is the data from number of data points from each category of ownership. Now, we have the so basically what is given is not the data in totality, we have here the compressed data, some compressed data which is obviously good enough for me to do the analysis. This is common in situations where the dimensionality is high, we need not uh, write the or take help of the whole data at every point at every level of calculation some compressed information is good enough for my analysis. Sometimes this will become mandatory if say the data are a little sensitive say I have included one variable uh, which is a little bit sensitive uh, which includes some in some such information which are not to be disclosed at the very ground level. So, what I have is the co is compressed data of this type. So, I need to know the group means. Okay. So, the group sample means are given to me, group sample means, I have to have these obviously without which I cannot proceed further. So, the first one x 1 bar is given by 2.066, then I have 0 0.480 4 dimensional, let me make it bigger, then I have 0, 8, 2 and 3, 6, 0. So, basically here I am getting the first one say 2.066, this is giving me the sample mean on the of all cost, the first cost x 1 in the first coming or coming in the first group that is the first group is uh, probably the private ones. Okay. Second is uh, second element is that of the same group this is x 1 bar, but this is pertaining to the second type of cost. So, similarly I have the for the second type of ownership I have x 2 bar and these values for the four variables for the four cost variables are 2.167. 0 0.596, 0 0.124 and 0.418. And then I have the third group sample means, these are 2.273, then I have 521, 125 and 383. Since I know the n i's and I also know the x i bars, I can calculate even if this is not given, therefore, calculate the sample mean, the overall sample mean x bar as 2.136 and then you have 519102 and 380. I also have the given the sample variance covariance matrices. So, again instead of the individual data observation, I have been given some compressed information, the sample sizes in each category, the group sample means and then I am I have been given the sample variance covariance matrices. Okay. So, the first one I am using the notation S 1 for this, this is a 4 by 4 symmetric matrix with elements like 0 0.291, then I have minus 0 0.001, the next one is 0 0.011, 0 0.002, this is 0 being kept to 3 places of decimal 0 0 0.001 and then I have 0 this is 0 1 0 followed by 0 0 3 and the last element is 0 0.010. 0. And similarly, I have S 2 and S 3, these are also given. Okay. Otherwise, again I cannot proceed. So, I have been given this three sample variance covariance matrices. I can see very, I know that S i, if you say it for the ith group, then this is S i is nothing but 1 by n i minus 1, and this is how 
I define the sample variance covariance matrix. So, x i j minus x i bar prime sum over j's from 1 to n i. So, what I need after this just as after these group means I have calculated the overall sample mean. Similarly, I need to calculate my within matrix for which I need the each of these individual sample covariance matrices. So, that I am able to calculate the within matrix okay, within variability matrix which we have denoted by w. So, what is that? It is not nothing but therefore, calculate again we can calculate this matrix w. I am interested in w and b because these are coming these two are the matrices where my interest lie because these two are coming in that likelihood ratio criterion lambda star. So, basically I have to arrive at these two b I can see I, I will get it with these means uh, information for w. I will have to calculate it with the help of the sample variance covariance matrices and this is nothing but n minus 1 s 1 plus n 2 minus 1 s 2 and n 3 minus 1 s 3. So, this is since well you know that this is nothing but the x i j minus x i bar x i j minus x i bar transpose this matrix. Okay. So, this is equal to this and with each of the s i's having de been defined in this way w matrix is nothing but this matrix which can be calculated with the help of the n i's and the s i's and what about b? Well, b is also it can be calculated with whatever information I have the with the compressed data. This is nothing but n i times x i minus x bar x i bar minus x bar transpose i goes from 1 to k in this case it is 3. Okay. So, now we test the hypothesis we are interested in the hypothesis that tau 1 is equal to tau 2 is equal to tau 3. In words, I say that there is no ownership effect that is no differences in the average costs among the three types of hospitals. So, my assumption is this whether it is a private hospital or a non-profit organization or a government hospital, there is basically no difference as far as average costs pertaining to those four factors are considered. So, that is what my null hypothesis is that there is no ownership effect and they on these costs which I have considered okay, among the three types of hospitals. Right. I know that the test statistic criterion etcetera for this is the Wilkes lambda if you recall is given by determinant of w by determinant of b plus w. Now, in the MANOVA parlance again w is nothing but the within or residual sum of squares cross, cross product matrix and b is the between or the treatment sum of squares and cross product matrix. So, if you wish you can just skip it here that w is the within or residual sum of squares cross product matrix and B is the between or the treatment in this case this ownership factor the treatment sum of square cross product matrix. So, this is the Wilkes lambda criterion given by determinant of w by determinant of b plus w and since w and b they, they depend only on the data I have all these values to me I have the matrix with me and this value comes out to be 
0.7714. I have to all I have to do is calculate the determinant of two 4 by 4 matrices. Now, here for p equal 2, this is for p equals 2, because we have no not p is p is the data dimensionality is 4 and k the number of groups is 3. Can we use any exact test? Yes, we can the exact test for well we have listed the situations where we can use exact test and we can use the exact test for the situation where I have p is greater than equal to 1, because I have p equals 4 and k equals 3. This case can be used and what is the test stati statistic for that? So, can be used and the test statistic here is n minus p minus 2 by p, this with 1 root lambda star by root lambda star and this gives me I have n as total number of observations that is 516 minus the dimension minus 2 by the dimension and then I have I have calculated the Wilkes lambda this is root of 0.7714 divided by this giving me the value 17.67. Okay. That is the observed value of the test statistic I have from the data and this test statistic is following an f distribution with degrees of freedom twice p twice n minus p minus 2 under h naught. So, this has to be compared with I have to compare this with f 2 p is 4 and then the second degrees of freedom turns out to be quite high because n is 5 16, 5 16. So, this is 1 0 2 0. Now, you will hardly have any table where this has been tabulated. What we do is we use uh, that this is approximated by the chi square distribution, central chi square distribution with 4, uh, not 4, we have 2 times p. So, base I have 8 f 8, the first one. So, this is chi square, central chi square with 8 degrees of freedom. but divided by that 2 p. So, this is getting divided by 8. So, this observed the tabulated value observed f is 17.67 and the tabulated chi square 8 at 0 1 say. So, basically I, ha I will have this f 8 1 0 2 0 at 0 1, this will be approximately equal to 1 by 8 chi square 8 at the same level. So, this tabulated value is equal to uh, given by the whole thing is given by divided by this is given by 2.51. So, I am calculating I am comparing 17.67 with tabulated this by 8 and this is obviously greater than or equal greater than this 2.51 telling me that I can reject therefore, reject H naught at 1 percent level of significance and conclude that average costs at least the costs that we have considered the four types of costs, they do differ average costs differ according depending on type of ownership, which is somewhat logical depending on type of ownership. So,
So, you may say that why are we insisting on the exact test, because here n is sufficiently large n is equal to 5 16. So, obviously, we can use the plain Wilkes criterion or with the Bertlet's correction. So, let us also do that, so that we have the plane directly we are going to the chi square test without going to the chi square via the f test. So, let us check what happens then, let us uh, uh, calculate afresh the test statistics. Now, since uh, here n is large, so we can simply use use asymptotics test and let us say the one with the Bartlett's correction. The test statistic is nothing but we have minus of n minus 1 and then the factor that comes is p plus k minus of p plus k by 2 and then it is log of determinant w by determinant b plus w and in this situation this is the constant term is 511.5 with log of we already know that factor is 0 0.7714 and this is having the value 132.76. Now, this chi square uh, test, this uh, test statistic follows a chi asymptotically follows a chi square distribution with p times k minus 1 degrees of freedom under h naught. And we have to see that tabulated chi square p is 4 k minus 1 is 2. So, chi square 8 at 0 0.01 and this is nothing but 20.09. So, we have already used this value in the earlier situation and since observed chi square that is 132.76 is greater than the tabulated value tabulated chi square 8 at 0 0.01 that is equal to 20.09 the asymptotic test also reject, we reject H naught at 1 percent level. So, we see that uh, this is not a big deal, we though we had some information about the exact test. So, we have we found a situation which matches with the situation that we had, so where we can take help of the fact that p is greater than equal to 1 and k is exactly equal to 3. So, we took the help of that to, to go to the exact test, we came to the f statistic, but there also we use some approximation, because the second degree of freedom was too high. So, that was again approximated by the chi square and we reached uh, the conclusion of rejection of H naught. Now, without going that way, without going through the exact test, we came to our approximate test, because n is clearly large here. We went by the Bartlett's correction and saw that in this way also, if we use the asymptotics test also, the hypothesis is rejected and there is definitely ownership effect on this average cost. Okay. Now, we had mentioned that we have data uh, which have been separated according to two factors that is ownership as well as certification. So, Though we had data, we could not use this information at that level, because we only knew how to handle one way MANOVA. I said that if somebody is interested in knowing that what is the effect, what is the effect of ownership and certification and obviously an indirect action effect of the two factors, then we have to go to the two way MANOVA. So, let us go into the theoretical aspects of two way MANOVA and then with the help of the data that is the extra data that we need here, the data separated due to the certification of the different hospitals. If we have that information also, we can complete the two way MANOVA analysis also. So, let us go to two way MANOVA model. Right. Here, so now you know that here we must have two factors. 
right. So, a factor a, a factor 1, say factor a with has a levels, factor b has b levels say. So, if we try to do draw parallel with the with our real life data example, what you can say is say factor a is the ownership factor, then it has how many levels? Well, a is equal to 3 here, because we talked of 3 types of ownerships. Factor b say is the certification factor, this also has 3 levels, this is not necessary that a and b can take different values, but um, this is coincidentally this is all b is also equal to 3 here, because we have talked about 3 types of certifications. But one thing here we consider is that we have n independent at least initially we have n independent observations can be observed or can be can be collected or can be monitored at each of the so it's a two way classification and there's a b such types of uh, classes. So, I have at each of the a b combinations. Okay, of the two levels a b combinations of the two levels. Right. So, my data vector x i j and k I need a third subscript and this is nothing but the kth random vector or random observation corresponding to the ith level of factor a, ith level of now I will simply write ith level of a and jth level of b. So, that is the situation I have and that is why there are 3 subscripts i, j and k, the kth random observation corresponding to the i th level of a, j th level of b. So, I know that i goes from 1 to a, because I have said that there are a levels of factor a, then j goes from 1 to b, because there are b levels of the second factor b and k goes from 1 to n, because for each of the a b combinations, I have n independent observations. Okay. Again, I assume a very simple model for the MANOVA, this analysis and I have x i j k, this is mu i j plus the, this is the mean effect part and the error part. Right. So, with expectation of x i j k is mu i j and hence implying I have this error having mean vector is the null vector. Moreover, for the inference part I have some distributional assumption, I use the assumption that this is following a p variate normal distribution with mean as the null vector and the variance covariance matrix as sigma. So, mu i j is let us concentrate on this part and try to split it up into the different factors. So, this mu i j is the mean effect due to the ith level of a and jth level of b and let us see how we handle this. So, as before I bring in an overall effect or the grand mean part that is mu and denoted by mu null null okay. and then we have this is how the adjustment goes. I have mu i naught 
minus this grand mean effect, then I again put a mu naught j again with the minus of overall effect. Now, since I have already brought these factors, what is the adjustment that I have to do finally? I have to consider a mu i j here, then I have to take out a mu i naught, I have to take out mu naught j and since mu the overall effect is has come twice with a negative sign. So, I must put a plus mu naught naught here. I use some special notations for this mu naught naught is replaced by the usual mu as in the one way MANOVA case, the overall or the grand mean effect. Now, there we had only mu i minus mu which was the tau i, here it is mu i naught minus mu naught naught and this is say now alpha i and for this I have beta j and this is giving me the let us use some another notation gamma and depending on both i j and this basically this gamma i j part has the interpretation of the interact action effect of a and b factor a and factor b. So, let us just describe the all these terms that parameters that we have introduced. So, where mu as before is the overall or grand mean effect then i have alpha i which is effect due to the ith level of a beta j is the effect due to the jth level of b and gamma i j, gamma i j is nothing but if you have a look at it, it is mu i j minus mu i naught. Let us go back to it and see what is this, this is gamma i j is mu i j minus mu i naught minus mu naught j plus this. So, this we have already introduced as the effect due to the jth level of b and what is the rest of it? Well, this is nothing but so, I have this, let us also write it in the parameter form, it will be easier for us. This is mu i naught minus, this comes in the subscript. So, mu i naught minus mu naught naught and then it is mu naught j minus mu naught naught. Is, the, is this, the, sorry, this is going to be mu i j, the first part this is not alpha i, what I have written here is alpha i, this is not the first part of gamma i j, it is mu i j minus mu i naught and then it is mu naught j minus mu naught naught, that is ok. So, this is here you see here i is fixed and I am taking out this mean effect from the j from this mu i j. So, basically it is what remains is the effect of jth level of b, but not overall at for a fixed i. So, this is at ith level of a, ith level of and then this is nothing but the effect due to the jth level of b and this is essentially we denote this as the interaction effect between ith level of a and jth level of b. So, now I can write so that the two way MANOVA model is you have x i j k again the k th observation due to i th 
level of a j th level of b this is equal to mu plus alpha i plus beta j plus gamma i j and finally, the error term e i j k with the very important assumption that this is a multivariate normal and you have i from 1 to a, j from 1 to b, k from 1 to n and what is more we have also those constraints, because we have defined this alpha i is nothing, but if you recall it is mu i naught minus mu naught naught. So, uh, similarly, for beta j and gamma i j also we had something in the background. So, all those factors are giving me some constraints, which are just like we had in the case of the one way manoeuvre. Here we will have more such constraints. So, these are sum of alpha i over i from 1 to a. This sum is equal to sum of the beta j sum over j from 1 to b. This is also equal to sum of gamma i j. Keep i fixed, take sum over j from 1 to b or consider the other type of sum gamma i j by their definition. If you check, it is very easy to do so. You take the summation, keep j fixed and consider the sum over i i from 1 to a, all of these are equal to 0. So, this completely describes my two way manoeuvre model and then what we do is we split the data to get the sum of squares and cross product matrices. So, this is split the data from the random vector, we come to the data. So, this is small x i j k equivalently we write it as x naught naught bar, then x i naught bar minus the overall sample mean. Uh, we have we have three subscripts here. So, this is going to be x i naught naught here also three and then we have x naught j naught bar minus this and then we have we have to do some adjustments here we have to write x i j naught bringing in this terms and then because we have already defined what our alpha i beta j and gamma i j are we also have a clue as as to how to get these terms here because these are essentially the the estimates of those parameters so, gamma i j naught and then gamma i naught naught bar minus then gamma naught j naught bar and I also put the overall sample mean. So, that what remains is x i j k minus x i j naught. So, we proceed with the calculation of the sum of squares cross product matrices and the so sum of squares cross product matrix decomposition. We start as in the one way case, we start with that within vari uh, uh, sorry the total variability of the data and that is now we have sum over 3 such things x i j k minus the total variability. So, I have the overall mean and x i j k minus x naught naught transpose. This is equal to the first for the first one let let us say I am keeping sum over i. So, the other two factors are coming n for k and b for j and what I have is x i naught. So, I have taken already summations over j and k. So, these j and k have become have vanished now and I have x i naught naught bar x overall and then 
the transpose of this. Next, I am considering leaving sum over j, which means I have taken care of sum over i and k. So, I have n and a here and then I have factors x naught j naught and the triple zeros are coming this one. At the next step, I consider sum over k, so that i and j are remaining here and then I have for n and then x i j naught minus x i naught. So, x naught j naught and the same terms, let us write it x i j naught minus x i naught naught minus x naught j naught plus the overall sample mean with this and finally, I have to have a triple summation because I am what I am trying to do is trying to write it in these four factors. So, these have been deliberately it has been split up into this form because I already have an idea about the sample estimates of the parameters and after bringing adding and subtracting all those extra factors, what remains in the end is x i j k minus x i j naught with x i j k minus x i j naught. So, this splitting is giving me, let us uh, denote uh, these matrices by letters. So, this is total the sum of squares total matrix uh, sum of squares total uh, sum of squares and cross product total matrix. So, this by T then the first one in the right hand side by A for the factor A, the second one is B for factor B and the third one this is the interaction effect. So, let us write A B for this and the last one is for the residual. So, let us write E for this and then we can from here we can form the two way MANOVA table to complete our analysis. So, each of these matrices can be calculated without any problem and hence we have the two way MANOVA table. First is of course, the source of variation then the degrees of freedom, then the sum of squares cross product matrices and next we will talk about the hypothesis test statistics and test procedures. So, first source so is a due to factor A source of variation due to factor A, then factor B, then the interaction of interaction A B, then we have the residuals and all these are adding up to the total variability present in the data, the corrected total. The degrees of freedom, because we have the first constraint that sum of uh, alpha i uh, that is equal to 0. So, I have a loss of 1 degrees of freedom here giving me a minus 1. Similarly, for factor b I have 1 loss of 1 degrees of freedom. So, this interaction has degrees of freedom a minus 1 product of these 2 degrees of freedom. Total I know has to be a b n minus 1 and hence the residual degrees of freedom is a b times n minus 1. The sum of squares cross product matrices are A by my notation, this is B, this is A B, the residuals is E and then this is T. I am going to test the test procedures for testing various effects.
Now, the first hypothesis here, the first null hypothesis here quite obviously, quite logically is the that we have the equality of the interaction effects and this is equal to 0. So, this if that is equal to 0, this is accepted, then we will move on to the next hypo, uh, next group of hypothesis, where we can test for the equality of means of the two factors separately. So, at the first stage we test that gamma 1 1 in this way I go to the last one that is gamma a b that is the last level last uh, of factor a and last of factor b this these are all 0 this is absence of interaction of the two factors and for this the Euler test rejects H naught. If this will I have the residual part that is the within vector within matrix for me, I am not using the bracket here. So, let us just leave it at E. This is a test statistic. We are and the between matrix here, this role is getting played by the because I am testing for the interaction effect, the within is always the residuals. So, sum of squares uh, and cross product matrix residuals, but the between role is being taken over by the A B matrix. So, this is getting divided by, so basically I have to write put a determinant sign actually and then we have E plus A B determinant of this and this is let us denote this by lambda a b star this is small ok. The asymptotic test can be we have minus n of log lambda a b star this converges to the chi square with p and corresponding degrees of freedom that is a minus 1 and b minus 1 or the Bartlett's test where I have a slight modification here. This is a b n minus 1 which is now the, the total number of observations and then I have it is a b n minus 1 the total n minus 1. So, that is the degrees of the, that is the degrees of freedom for the total sum of squares total and then we have minus of p plus 1 a minus 1 b minus 1 this by 2. So, this is slightly different from what we have in the one way analysis case, the correction factor here is in fact a b n minus 1 and this is with the log of lambda a b star. This also asymptotically follows the central chi square with p a minus 1 b minus 1 under h naught. So, we are going to find the value of this since we know the matrices there is no problem in calculating this Wilkes lambda criterion and then we go for the next level of test that is if H naught 1 is accepted. We all know the test procedures now if this is accepted that is there is in fact no interaction we test for. H naught 2 that is the equality of the different levels of the factor A and these are now tested separately beta 1 to beta B. Now, in fact, 
I can say that this are equal and also equal to the null vector, because what we are essentially testing is mu i minus if you if you recall that how are these alpha i's and beta j's are defined right and the constraints that we have if these are all equal they must be equal to 0 similarly here also we can mention this in our one way ANOVA as well uh, if we have not mentioned it already there in the in the hypothesis part wherever we are writing the hypothesis because we have the constraint, it always enables me to write that this is equal to 0. So, let us just go back a few pages and this is for the MANOVA, this is, this is for the ANOVA case, I have the constraint this, right here we can mention, these are for the equalities, we are obviously not going to write equal to the null vector, but since we have come to the constraint that some of these are equal to the null vector, we can always write this as 0 and at least one inequality. So, this can be actually corrected by writing at least one is or no inequality that is that is fine at least one inequality not a problem right that is all. So, let us go to our last part wherever we had stopped because of the constraints we can write this and then for testing this hypothesis, the second hypothesis after the acceptance will, it needs to be mentioned here if the third one, if the first one is rejected that there is some interaction effect, then there is no point in testing that these effects are, that there is no effect and these are all equal to the null, uh, null vector. Okay. So, if that is accepted, if H naught 1 is accepted, then when only we go for H naught 2. Obviously, this has no bearing with the other group that is even if this is H naught 2 is accepted or rejected, we will go and check for H naught 3. So, this for the first uh, part that is uh, for H naught 2, we reject So, we can write this as reject H naught 2, if determinant of E the within matrix and now the between matrix is nothing but the A matrix, this we denote by lambda A star is small and reject H naught 3 if determinant of E by determinant of E plus B that is lambda B star is small. For the second one that is for H naught 2, I can use that N lambda A star, this follows asymptotically follows a central chi square with P times a minus 1, we have we have p or so, sorry a levels of the factor a or with Bartlett's correction we have a b n minus 1 plus p plus sorry this is a minus sign the common minus here p plus 1 minus a minus 1 the correction factor by 2 this with log of we missed a log here minus n log lambda star a log of lambda a star. This follows the same chi square with the a minus 1 under h naught 2 and for h naught 3, the third one I have minus n log lambda b star following chi square p b minus 1 or with the Bartlett's correction, I can use a b n minus 1 minus p plus 1 with b minus 1 by 2, this with log lambda b star, this follows a chi square p with b minus 1 under h naught 3. 
So, I can use I can find the values and immediately get the test procedures, I, I get my decisions and next what I do is I list down the exact test situations that are available. So, let us say that the degrees of freedom say let us define this as the degrees of freedom for the sum of squares cross product matrix due to the interaction effect. and let gamma 2 be the error effect or the residual effect. And under the respective hypothesis, if we have situations like the dimension or the number of variables, the degrees of freedom of respective sum of squares cross product, then the test statistic and their distribution will quickly write down this, this is p equals 1, p equals 2, greater than equal to 1 and greater than equal to 1 also. So, the situation here is gamma 1 is greater than or equal to 1, gamma 2 can be anything, gamma 1 is greater than equal to 2, gamma 1 is equal to 1 and gamma 2 is equal to 2. So, for any value of the other this is also gamma 1. So, this is for any value of gamma 2 and the test statistics are gamma 2 by gamma 1, 1 minus lambda star by lambda star of f gamma 1 gamma 2 under the null hypothesis. So, we are considering respective hypothesis, null hypothesis and accordingly we are forming the test statistics and for the next one is what we have is again this note that this lambdas are going to be respectively a b or a or b according to the null hypothesis. So, we are going to continue complete this exact test table and if possible we will go to a data. Uh, example or we will continue with a new topic hence.